Hello everyone, thank you for joining us over here for this session. Uh, we are here to talk about marketing automation with Drupal Commerce and Motic. Uh, if you're in the wrong room, <laughs> please do check. Uh, I hope you are not. Uh, so before we get started, a little bit about us. So I'm Abhishek Dhariwal, a DXP consultant. So I join hand with the uh, pre-sales team for technical solutions. I write uh, technical proposals and I, then I join know, uh, the de uh, and delivery teams for smoother executions of the de deliveries until it is delivered. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm Pratik Jain. I lead uh, digital experience services at Exilident. Um, I'm responsible for growing our services related to Drupal and the other open source ecosystem. Um, I help lead our consulting services. So I typically come in at the strategy and the initial solutioning stage before we get to the delivery side of the things. Um, Yep, uh, I have my uh, in-house podcast as well, I mean, which is goes by the name of DXP Deconstructed. Uh, so that's something I do as well. Uh, so a little bit about our organization, Exilent. So we are a full-service agency. Uh, we are about 200 odd people spread across six different time zones. And uh, we have been remote from get-go, not a post-COVID effect, but we have been remote for over a decade now and uh, have been operating uh, in various open source technologies, including Drupal. Uh, we have been a very active in Drupal community, including uh, contributions, participation in the events, and things like that. And we, we help and, uh, our customers at all stages, right from strategy, then to design and build, and then to the growth stages related to the marketing automation, personalization, and that's what we are going to talk about today in this session. Uh, we work with uh, uh, some of these clients' logos are listed over here. We work with uh, uh, a large variety of uh, industries. We are not industry agnostic as such, but then we do have specializations in a couple of industries as well. We work with healthcare, nonprofit, government, consumer goods, and more. Uh, these are some of the customers that we work with. We work with both direct customers as well as agencies uh, to deliver digital solutions using open source ecosystem. So I want to get started with uh, telling you a story or a success story about a project that we delivered with the help of Motic. Uh, so one of our customer who is an e-commerce SaaS provider, they wanted to build a platform to support the marketing automation to their sellers. So basically they already had an e-commerce platform where sellers can come in, upload their product, and these are like small sellers, like selling cookies from home or people who don't know how to build websites and they are just looking for a platform to uh, have their product launched. So they already had this e-commerce product and our customer wanted to enable them by providing a marketing automation solution as well. So each seller will have their own marketing automation solution where they can run campaigns, send personalized uh, emails uh, and uh, things like that. So this is where they came to us asking that if we can help with them. Um, so this particular engagement started with a small discovery where we had to start with choosing what kind of platform you need, uh, what's the right tool for it. There were, there were platforms, including the proprietary ones that they were considering. Uh, but some of the things that they were looking for is that they wanted to automate the entire marketing automation. So uh, given the sellers were non-technical, they wanted to give them a limited capability and have ready to use campaigns, templates, or workflows, which they can directly use it. Obviously, they will be able to customize it, but most of the sellers would be looking for using the existing and pre-configured templates and campaigns as part of uh, their selling uh, platform and where they can uh, add their own products, launch their own campaigns. So uh, this is what was the problem statement. And uh, our customer wanted to start with more like 100 customers. So these were like 100 Motic instances is where we would uh, talk a little bit more about it. And like I said, they, they wanted that kind of a scalability to have and onboard new customers as and when they uh, onboard a new seller on their platform. So this is essentially what they wanted, like for each organization or each seller, they wanted a separate application where, which comes with a pre-configured uh, segments, email templates and, and configurations. So, uh, like I mentioned, it started with more like a discovery. We started discovering uh, what exactly they wanted, how the level of customization they not wanted in each of those platform. And uh, Motic was chosen as uh, because it was scalable and it kind of met their uh, needs. So we were able to quickly build uh, this Motic stack in a particular region where uh, Motic instances were hosted within the containers within the Kubernetes platform. And uh, each seller will have their own Motic instances over there. And uh, it had a deep integration with the e-commerce portal that they already had. So what it means is 
uh, anything that is happening on the e-commerce portal uh, would get synced to the, their marketing automation uh, instance, which is a Motic instance, and they would be able to run campaign for their users over there. So we used uh, uh, Python to build this connection. We had onboarding APIs where as and when the new seller is onboarded, a new instance gets created within seconds, and we are able to launch the new Motic instance uh, easily with the pre-configured campaigns and the email templates. So this is just a kind of a diagram of how we uh, got started with it. And the reason we kind of proposed this kind of an architecture is because we wanted to have an integrated marketing automation solution where your marketing automation is not just working separately, it's tightly integrated at the same time, it's configurable uh, with your existing ecosystem, which is the, in this case, the e-commerce platform that they had. So we wanted to build this kind of a system where your marketing automation is able to do segmentation, there is some sort of analytics, it connects with your CMS, um, and uh, other omni-channel platforms as well uh, over here. So this is what we did. Uh, we used Motic at the core for the marketing automation solution. We used Drupal and Drupal Commerce as a platform to build and give as a, uh, as a capability of a content management system and then integrated that. And in the end, provided an omnichannel experience where uh, our, the sellers would be able to target different platforms like emails, SMSs, or even push notifications or anything else for, their, for running their campaigns. Uh, before, we, we are going to go have a demo about what we built uh, uh, next, but before I do that, I also wanted to introduce the CDP. Um, um, some of you might be already be familiar with it, I mean, but just to kind of summarize, uh, CDP is a centralized system where customer data is stored and it's stored in a unified profile manner, so it comes with a lot of these features where um, uh, data integration, unified profiles, advanced segmentation and personalization and the automations can be done as well. Uh, so the reason I'm kind of talking about this is because we not only did that uh, uh, with using Motic, Drupal, and um, uh, to, to build this kind of a marketing automation solution, and which is omnichannel. But we also went one step ahead, and uh, we, getting inspired from our customer, we actually also integrated CDP to it, where now we have a more granular data about the users, where we would be able to run campaigns based on the CDP segments. So we are going to demo a couple of use cases, one just where Drupal is talking to the Motic, and the another use case where Drupal is sending the data to the CDP platform, and the CDP platform where the intelligence is and the customer data is, is kind of triggering the Motic campaigns as well. So. And uh, these are some of the high-level features that CDP comes with. Uh, again, uh, I'm not getting into the depth of it uh, as a CDP, what all you can do, but then I just wanted to kind of introduce over here. And this is what then it looks like as well. So we have Drupal, Motic, and Omnichannel, and we, we decided to use uh, Twilio segment as a CDP platform. Um, as part of this architecture, none of, I mean, all of these are composable. Uh, it's, it's not like kind of a tightly integrated. So if we decide to use a different CDP platform, uh, that can happen as well. We, uh, it's just that for this uh, demo purposes, we used uh, Twilio segment as our CDB platform, Motic as our marketing automation, and Drupal as a CMS, but it could technically work with any other uh, technology stack or that you may have. So the idea was to build it in a composable manner where each piece is independent and can be reutilized or, or integrated with any other stack. So this is what we are going to demo you uh, uh, next, so we, uh, as, as part of this presentation, we helped prepare this, uh, this plugin for our customer and then extended it further for some more use cases. Over here, we are trying to cover the use cases which are specific to retail industry, like cart abandonment. I mean, so I'm sure all of you must be shopping online and then Amazon's of the world, right? I mean, leaving products in your cart and then receiving an email, hey, you have this product in your cart left, right? Uh, would you like to complete the checkout? So we tried to automate those kind of use cases uh, over here, the campaigns like WinBack campaigns where you may not have uh, been on the platform for let's say a couple of months, but then the, 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 the platform itself says that, hey, you have not been on the platform, can you come back, right? Those kind of campaigns, what retail industry wants to launch, and then few other uh, campaigns over here can be launched as well as part of this plugin. So we helped develop this plugin, which is a Motic specific plugin. We also integrated with the Drupal Commerce, and that's what we are uh, going to show you next. Uh, so uh, over to you, Abhishek. Yeah, th thanks, Pratik. Okay. 
So why not we start our demo with a story? So a story about stride craft. So uh, this this is uh, this demo platform actually developed using uh, Drupal Commerce and a custom customized theme. And whatever the content you are seeing at the moment are all AI generated. So so stride card com comes with a very specific use cases. Right, the people are surfing around and uh, roaming through the pages and adding the product to the cart, and lots of people are checking out and making sales to the to stride uh, stride craft. But there are people who are just browsing through and adding the product to the cart and uh, you know uh, leaving those product in the cart and not making any purchase. These uh, these users are basically uh, you know creating abandoned carts data inside you know, your uh, e-commerce cart. So now, there's an interesting case. Either we can live with it, or we can improve it, right? So how we can improve these experiences so that people come back and uh, you know, uh, they are motivated, or maybe lure them to complete their you know, uh, uh, shopping ex experience. Let's Let's check it by, you know, uh, doing it practically. It's just, you know, logged in through the admin. So let's say uh, we are starting with an, you know, uh, already um, a user which is part of your uh, system. And let's see, so this users come, come to and logged in into your system and then browse to the product page. And adds one pro product into the cart. Right? So there is a product into, into the cart. Now this user goes away. Right? So. I'm now just uh, you know switching to my admin account just to give you an glimpse of how this admin interface is looking like just a second So basically, these are the settings for, you know, just to communicate to our Mautic instance. Here is our Mautic instance is hosted, and these are the credentials to, you know, the backend API calls, uh, you know, Mautic API, then, uh, you know, sends these, uh, these abandoned car data back to Mautic, so that, you know, the further segmentation can happen at the Mautic end. Currently, I'm doing this through the, this uh, push data to Mautic CTA, but in a real world, it would be done by a cron job. So now we have a confirmation message, and then this data has to be pushed uh, to our Mautic instance. Yeah. So these are all the users who somehow have, you know, uh, have abandoned their car data uh, in, into the, uh, you know, your uh, e-commerce system. All have been synced here to, you know, data push. This is the historical data. Uh, uh, the currently, with, uh, I, there is only one user that been pushed. I'm just uh, going back to our, our dashboard. 
just to explain how all these things are being set up. So basically, we have a plugin called Retail Marketing. Yes, this one. So uh, this plugin was developed by, by us, and uh, the use case is uh, when this plugin is installed, it basically does three things. It creates a segment, abandoned cart segment, so all the users which have been uh, part of, which have left the data in their cart, now be part of this, uh, this particular segment. The another thing, thing that, uh, this, that this particular uh, plugin does is it creates email templates that have been sent by, uh, to those users which are part of this segment. And third thing that it does is it creates an automated campaign which will be triggered for all, the, all those users which are part of this particular segment. So this is a, a campaign that has been uh, created by that plugin. So for the first one is this, uh, you know, the, this segment. This segment data is sent to the, this first reminder uh, campaign. So what, what, what basically happens when, you know, uh, someone has uh, put their data into the abandoned cart and that, uh, that data has been synced and part of this segment, right? This, uh, the, this first email is triggered through this first, this first reminder email is triggered, and then uh, when users look into that uh, uh, email, the read notification goes back to Mautic, and then the second, uh, uh, sec the second part of this uh, uh, campaign is triggered. That is, the second reminder uh, will, will be sent when uh, someone has read the previous email. After that, uh, we do not want to, you know, jank in uh, or send a lot of email to, to the user, that's like our campaign uh, completes right there. Let's, let's see how this is happening in practical. So when uh, the first email is uh, through this particular uh, campaign, the first email is triggered then you know the end user will receive uh, this sort of email now we come back to our second use case Just remember, we added one product into the cart. Now let's see, let's, let's assume another scenario where this user completes uh, you know, uh, the purchase and uh, order is generated. Now uh, time passes and these customers are not returning back. In this scenario, uh, what would happen? Either you can, we can leave uh, with this information that uh, or we can target them back so that they come back uh, to our store and make the purchase again. So we are calling it a win back campaign. So in this scenario, the, uh, what, we, what basically we are doing, the information goes, when someone completes their, their purchase, the information goes into our uh, CDP. We currently, we are using uh, you know TV, TV Leo segment uh, as a uh, CDB solution. So once once the purchases are made, this information goes to our CDP, and CDP records this this event as an order complete, right? So now there are a lot of order add to cart are happening. So when this order is completed, so we have created, you know, uh, we have create, created a audience, uh, uh, audience there in the in this segment, which actually uh, 
observe those those events or those ordinary completed events which have been uh, completed at least one time in a past past year for example if we are targeting those users which have made a purchase in the last year but they never come back right but they they have at least completed one order so in that case we are and what we are targeting if if the user says has uh, completed a uh, product uh, you know purchase in the uh, last year and we are also looking at he hasn't made any purchase within the past month so we are targeting those users so uh, by this campaign so that they can return back to our store and maybe uh, you know complete uh, complete their purchases So if, if you look at these configurations, what we are doing, we are targeting this order complete event, right? And we are saying if is this particular order, if the user has completed order at least once in the past 90 days, uh, we are looking for the quarter, and he hasn't made any, uh, he hasn't made, uh, completed this order within last 30 months, uh, 30 30 days. That means. He has successfully completed the purchase in the last quarter, but he didn't return back. So, in the, uh, so uh, when you know this condition is met, that particular user will be added into this audience. Yeah. So when that user enters in that particular audience segment. A destination call is happens, that, that, which is basically a web, again a web hook call to our Mautic instance. So here, here we are, you know, capturing few data. As a treat. So basically, uh, in this uh, in this particular you know uh, data set, you see as a treat that there is an email address and we win back customer. That is a segment that we are targeting. And there there may there could be more information about that particular user. Maybe the first name, last name, and maybe the product history that he has purchased uh, previously, right? And these all data will be passed to our modeling ins instance through this web webhook, and then. At the Mautic end, we we have an, another you know campaign that is win win back campaign, which actually consumes this uh, this data and sends a win back email to our to those users, so, and that email will look like this one. So that means uh, that. To those users which were actually uh, not, you know, uh, very much active on your uh, on on your shopping uh, shopping cart or uh, on your setup, they may be looking at those offers or any anything that we maybe learn them to do, you know, come back or make a purchase on your uh, website. So this sort of uh, you know uh, setup will help us to win uh, customers again, and uh, you know. Uh, this is just you know uh, the another a boost to our sales okay I think we are just trying to you add the new user yeah, over here. Trying to, 
what have we talked uh, so far and trying to you know mock this uh, you know in practically happening so so that uh, with the new user we should receive a new email right and this thing uh, the entire flow should be working in that in that case So the, go the goal that we had was to have this plugin ready, which can be used by any any e-commerce uh, store. You can just install this Motic plugin. It comes with predefined segments and the email templates that Abhij Abhishek just showed. And uh, we also have done some minor work at the Drupal side to sync the product information or abandoned card information or the user information either directly to the Motic or via CDP, and uh, which then in turn helps uh, run those uh, marketing automation campaigns uh, over here. So that's what I guess Abhishek is trying to do over here. We are, we are just logging in as a user and uh, we'll see a real time email. I mean, hopefully, just like the demos work, we will hopefully this will work at the right time um, over here. Um, so yeah, we'll go and then add a product over here. So yeah, this is our API configuration, which and now the data gets pushed to the Motic. We are just looking for the contact that got sick, uh, so just bear with us. <laughs> This user is part of this segment. Now we must have received one email. Yes, we have received this email. So uh, this way we, you know, run our entire abandoned card, you know, campaign. So now we have, you know, the, this return button. Then uh, users wants to he can, can you know return back to our store back. I just want to one more show you one more thing here. And within this uh, report, we can also uh, uh, see uh, all the users where all the emails have been sent so far. 
with this user now i am going to uh, one step further and let's say he uh, now you know completing his purchase let's see what happens in then in that case also uh, let's look at at this stage what had happened on our cdp that is also interesting to watch So uh, when if, uh, that user clicked on that add to card button, one event was triggered that is called add to card and that was registered at, the, at our uh, you know, uh, CDP also. Now with this case, we can, you know, uh, with, we can leverage this particular event to create our you know, uh, other campaigns. For example, we can use uh, this information to create hyper personalization things, right? So uh, basically, uh, it, it shows the potential of the integration of CDP with your, you know, marketing or you know, e-commerce system. So these are the just an example. You can have enormous n number of, you know, events, and then based on those events, you can, uh, you know, uh, plan your marketing campaigns and uh, any other sort of campaigns, and even you run your personalization goals, right? Now let's go back to our store and let's complete those purchases. I log in with the same user. I go to my card. And I, you know, uh, go through all the flow of you know uh, for for the to you know complete our, my checkout process. So I select here India. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are some fields. Uh, maybe, maybe we can directly show the emails that goes out. Uh, uh, because we, part uh, of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, we have to go through this process so that. I'm doing this by selecting cash on delivery. Okay. So let's go back to our CDP and let's see what entry we see. So as soon as the customer has completed their order, so we can see there, there is a order complete event is registered. And now we have a associated campaign uh, with this event. It will trigger an email when that condition is met because now we have a very big time, time interval. It's not possible to, you know, uh, that email will be triggered now, but we have an option to trigger that right away. So what I do, I just go back to my hook, this mapping. I load my test data. Within this trait, I add more information that uh, making sense for this particular example we want to register first name
Yeah. So by hitting that, we are sending this cache data to our Amartic uh, webhook. So as a response, uh, it is suggests that uh, the data push was success, and uh, we have, you know, uh, that created means that entry has to already been registered with our Amartic instance. Now we should have uh, email received in this point. Maybe Morting will take some time to, you know, uh, execute that campaign. I think, I think the cron needs to run. Uh, uh, so it will take a minute or two for... Yeah. Uh, so while, while we wait for uh, the team, right, uh, maybe we can uh, get back to the presentation and... Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, the email was kind of very similar. I mean, like uh, kind of this, where uh, these emails are kind of coming out. What we we have missed you. You can come back to the platform and and things like that. Uh, so yeah, this is what we did. I mean, we just had screenshot plan just in case the demo didn't work. I mean, the user adds the product to the card, uh, push data to the Motic, and then uh, the user segmentation gets created at the Motic side. Uh, based on it, and then you receive an email, uh, which is for abandoned card as well as for the uh, uh, the win back campaigns. Um, so yeah, the emails looks like this uh, over here. Um, so just kind of summarizing it. So all of these, like the campaigns, the templates, and all all of will all of that will get created as soon as you install the plugin. And all of obviously it can be customized further based on your needs. And then uh, the templates and anything of that sort can be customized further. Um, and yeah, this is. Uh, the, the platform that Abhishek showed yeah, about uh, connecting that, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, these are all our sources. Uh, so, uh, it's better I give a, give a small brief. I think uh, we have some time. So, CDP is a collection, collect data from your various touch points, right? And then creates a unified uh, profile for the users. That's the main and basic role of the user. Uh, of a CDP. And anything around it was not a part of CDP, that's an enhancement of that, right? So, uh, for example, in our case, we were, you know, uh, collecting data through JavaScript and uh, this commerce backend, which is JavaScript. Uh, th this is the data that is coming from the JavaScript, is basically all the interaction uh, that is happening on the website. Uh, that data is getting registered here. And what, what, whatever the, you know, the server, uh, you know, uh, sending the data that is registered here. That because uh, that is the backend API, which is basically uh, called, and all the data then consolidated in our in this uh, uh, here to create a unified profile of the users. Now it is, it is really interesting because uh, you know the, this profile information cannot be completed through a single data source, uh, and uh, the number of the sources is directly connected connected to your enrichment of this profile data, right? And uh, this profile data will also, you know, uh, be used to identify the patterns and behavior uh, behavior of the particular customer, right? And then this data is sent to our down, down, downstream. In this case, uh, we are using Motic webhooks. So all the patterns and the behavior information that we receive from, you know, various, through the various uh, touch points, then can then can be utilized, you know, to, to run our hyper personalizations and uh, you know any any uh, sort of marketing campaigns. So this is the whole uh, you know the use case of using the CDP. The CDP and the uh, you know uh, multi combination is a powerful thing that you can you know uh, use in in your any sort of any kind of websites. It, it could be your e-commerce portal or anything else, you know, where you can connect. Your, with your customers in a you know very effective way yeah over to Prithi. Yeah, thank you so yep i mean i guess we saw i mean it's part of the cdp the the, the the primary difference between using a cdp in between is that we could record granular events like add to cart 
which pages were visited, and then you could have a more granular segmentation possible criteria over there as compared to directly getting into the motics. So that's where we decided to use a CDP solution in between over here. And uh, we were able to do that, uh, uh, like recording obviously these events over here, and then you can go as granular as possible, as hyper-personalized as possible uh, for your campaigns over here using this. Uh, yeah, like you can see, right, all the events are getting tracked apart from the page visits and all in the CDP. And like I said, the CDP could be replaced as well. Over here, we use segment CDP, but then this could be any other CDP as part of the platform. Uh, and we created these uh, user profiles and created these segments over here. Uh, these are some of the references um, where uh, the architecture that we showed is kind of uh, uh, there in this blog. And there's a success story where we, how we developed this multi-client uh, and then where multiple instances of Motic were kind of launched. And where this plugin was used and onboarding scripts were used to kind of onboard new customers. Uh, so some of these references are over here. Uh, yep, uh, so I'll just, give, that's, right. and yeah, uh, that's it from my side. I know we, we have five, four minutes precisely for any questions. So yeah, these are our uh, LinkedIn handles, just in case if you have any questions further outside of this, but we're happy to take any questions that you may have. So Motic lets you design uh, the campaigns the way you want, like depending upon the business, you can have a different logic. Uh, so as part of the plugin that we installed, that campaign was auto-created. But we understand that the same campaign would not work for all the businesses out there. I mean, everybody wants to have their own campaign. Uh, so it has an email, uh, the campaign builder, where you can have certain actions. Let's say the first email goes out after 24 hours. Uh, the second reminder email goes out. If the customer hasn't opened the email, then you can do uh, and send another email in 72 hours. Or if they have opened the email and have not acted upon it, you may decide to not send a second email, right? So that campaign builder exists as part of the Motic. Correct, correct. And uh, as I... As uh, Pratik has already explained, uh, this entire thing that we have, uh, you know, uh, seen on the uh, Motic side is configured automatically by that plugin. We call it Retail Marketing Accelerators, and uh, we are hoping to add more use cases, and we are also seeking, you know, community support for, you know, to add more uh, uh, contribution there and uh, come up with more use cases and enrich these things. Uh, that is open source for now. Yeah, so that plugin itself, the Motic plugin itself is open source. Uh, I think I may have missed that URL in the references. Uh, oh no, it's the second one. Yeah, so so uh, uh, this is the open source plugin that is available, which gives you predefined segments, email templates, and campaigns, and you can extend it on, on uh, further on that. Cool. Um, I guess uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for coming in, and yeah, thank you for listening to us.